Poker can teach an amazing number of skills to people who play, study, and love the game. My name is Matt Rozu. I'm Dean of the Sigmund Y School of Business at Susquehanna University. I'm also a professor of economics. I've taught economics for over 20 years. I've played poker seriously for almost as long. And I want to talk a little bit about four skills can gain from playing poker. What does poker teach us? So organizations that oppose gambling will often claim that gambling has no benefits, and that's certainly false. Now, there are there can be issues with gambling, and I know there are some a small percentage of the population, but a non-trivial percentage can really develop gambling problems. And if you have a gambling problem, please do seek help for a gambling addiction. But gambling certainly has benefits as well. Beyond the simple enjoyment that we experience from gambling, many, many forms of gambling teach useful skills. So blackjack, right, teaches you about odds, about variance, you know, how good runs of luck and bad runs of luck. It also can teach about money management if you play it semi-seriously. How much money at a $5 bet would you need to have in your bankroll? So if you plan to play $5 a hand or 10 or $25 a hand, how much money would be a reasonable amount of money for you to have at the table where you know you'll have enough money to enjoy your evening? So placing bets on horse races also can teach skills, right? Odds and probabilities are prominent when you're examining horse racing. And somebody who comes in and knows nothing very quickly will learn that if uh, something's listed at um, you know, even odds, they'll double their money. Or if, if it's you know, 14 to one odds, right, you'll win, so you'll get a $70 win for a $5 bet, right? Sports betting, same thing. You can actually learn a lot about odds really quickly with sports betting. So a lot of different forms of gambling can provide some skill development, but Nothing matches the real world skills you gain, like what you can gain from poker. Now it's kind of fitting, right? The Really the most glamorous of all of the gambling games actually teaches us so much. It's, it's kind of known as one of the most common American pastimes. Mark Twain used to speak eloquently about poker. Poker has been played in the Oval Office by m many presidents and um, tens of millions of Americans play poker. So some will play for very low stakes for pennies and some will play for high stakes, but the game combines instinct, mathematical ability, psychology, and of course a little bit of luck. Now scholars have studied poker for many years and used many different approaches, but those who've taken the idea seriously have found that poker is a game that requires significant skill. It is a game of predominantly skill. Their study by University of Chicago researchers and they found that highly skilled players in the World Series of Poker had a 30% return on investment, ROI as it's called, whereas those who were not highly skilled actually had a negative ROI from playing poker. I did some research with uh, psychologist Michael Smith. We found that one of the biggest factors in whether somebody was a winning poker player or not was actually the amount of time they spent studying. Well, both of these studies actually confirm that poker is a game where there is a significant amount of skill involved, right? No matter how much studying you do, it can't help you win at slot machines, right? Where you're pushing the buttons, unless I guess you note some flaw in a slot machine. But if a game is entirely luck, there is no possibility for skill to be involved. There's studying can't matter. So skill is involved in poker to a significant degree and there's actually research from the University of Pennsylvania that found the amount of skill in poker was somewhat similar to the amount of skill in golf. There's certainly luck in poker, right? And in any given hand there's a, there's a lot of luck. But over time the people with more skill win, just like in golf over time the people with more skill win. So the idea that poker is a game of skill and that it can teach us things is pretty common among scholars. Let's examine four separate areas where poker can teach us skill. And we're gonna start with math. So a person who plays a significant amount of poker 
uh, quickly learns about statistics, mathematics, and probability. If you play poker seriously at all, you quickly learn what are called pot odds. So the amount of money a person has to risk versus how much uh, they could win. And, and to be successful at poker, you have to learn how to do this pretty quickly. So for example, if you are facing a bet uh, of, let's say it's $10. If you're in a hand where you estimate you're going to win one third of the time, the decision really comes down to the odds. So if you have to call a $10 bet, if you could win back $20, right, you're going to break even because you're risking 10 to win 20. And if you win one third of the time, on average, you're breaking even. If you would win less than 20, on over the long run, you would lose by making that call. But if you'd win more than 20, over the long run, you'd win. So comparing the pot odds to the probability that you win, right, is, is a key skill in poker. And really, very quickly, people start to learn about, um, about percentages, uh, how to factor these decisions differently. And absolutely key skill to learn in poker right away. So the math in poker really can get quite complex. I showed a that was a reasonably simple example. Uh, you could start to examine the odds people would hold any particular hand based on the variety of hands they would expect to hold. Right? There's, um, you know, for example, there's a one in one out of every 221 times you get two cards in Texas Hold'em, you should get aces. Uh, how often would you get, a, for example, an ace-king or an ace-king suited? And then based on the action, what set of hands might somebody have? This can get pretty complex pretty quickly, but a serious poker player probably learns the equivalent of a college-level statistics class by playing poker. There's much more than just the math. Second key skill from poker, strategy. Uh, poker players learn about strategic interactions really quickly. So poker rewards those who can outthink their opponents, uh, quite simply. Take different pieces of information, synthesize that information, and learn how to make correct decisions. So might seem intuitive, but there's some pretty deep concepts learned by those who play poker. There's advanced game theory concepts like mixed strategies, how to vary play uh, so that you cannot be exploited, and also exploitative strategies where you're seeing if somebody's making an error in their play and doing something you wouldn't normally do to exploit that particular error. Now a mixed strategy in baseball, for example, a pitcher can't throw all fastballs or they can't throw all curveballs. They have to mix it up. They have to throw some percentage of fastballs and curveballs. Otherwise, the hitter will know exactly what to expect. Uh, poker is similar. You, you'll want to vary your actions just a little bit to make sure you are not allowing yourself to be exploited by another skilled opponent. A key example in poker on this is how often do you bluff? If you are a player and you really never bluff, you can be exploited because when you are making a bet, a thinking opponent should know it's not a bluff. It's never a bluff. If you bluff too often, a thinking opponent will think, well, this person bluffs a lot. That should influence their play. If you're the type who never bluffs, a thinking opponent will choose not to call you very often. If you bluff all the time, they will call you a whole lot. Either way, you get exploited. If you properly mix your strategies, uh, what percentage of the time to bluff, you can prevent yourself from being exploited. And if you realize your opponents are making mistakes, you can play an exploitative strategy. So all sorts of really deep concepts, right? Scratching the surface and these skills are very much in terms of thinking on how to not be exploited and how to exploit certain situations incredibly applicable to the real world. A third skill poker teaches us is emotional maturity. Uh, a player who plays poker seriously can really learn how to handle emotional swings. So if you play poker for a period of time, whether you're a winning player or a losing player, you're going to have swings where you win and you lose sometimes a fair amount, or sometimes it seems like for these very long streaks of good luck or bad luck. Uh, 
learning how to handle both the good situations and the bad situations and keep your calm is something that good poker players have to do. And really, that's an important life skill as well. So if you are in a run of bad luck, keeping the right mindset, kind of trusting the process uh, is the kind of the phrase we've heard from some uh, from sport, some sports teams recently can be incredibly valuable. So let's say you're applying for jobs and you keep getting turned down for opportunity after opportunity. Well, it would require some take a look, right? Maybe there's something you're doing wrong. However, maybe it's just simply bad luck. And most most jobs you apply for you won't get. And so there should be streaks within life. Understanding that hey, you're not doing anything wrong keep at it, keep going with the process, and knowing how to handle that is key. And those who play poker learn this. Uh, Learn that, look, study, try to make sure you're making every decision right, but there will be some swings that are really bad and you've gotta learn how to kind of handle and fight through that. Likewise, there'll be streaks that seem like you're on top of the world with poker and you can do nothing wrong. And that's just good luck. And handling good luck uh, and the right mindset, not getting too arrogant about how things are going is also quite key. Um, A great book called The Poker Mindset by Ian Taylor and Matthew Hilger really addresses the psychological aspects of poker and how a successful player handles them. That uh, I think these skills are so essential for success that uh, Taylor, uh, Taylor's and Hilger's book has actually been used in by economic analysts and in a college class on legal negotiations because this mindset is valuable for life. And kind of keeping cool whether things are going your way or whether they're not going your way is is incredibly important. The emotional control that poker players learn is a valuable life skill. Fourth skill, fourth thing that poker teaches us is money management. Uh, Quite simply, uh, in poker, running out of money if you're a serious poker player, it means you don't get to play poker. So play, poker players know that just because they actually have money, they don't get to spend it anywhere. There's a certain amount of funds to stay in business, which is playing poker, and that it's good to have reserve funds available if a bad run of luck happens. So players who wish to play regularly, wish to have regular games, learn money management skills. Um, most serious players have a separate, it's called bankroll for poker. And this is money that's not just spending money. So if they have a decent night at the tables, it's not like, oh, time to go buy whatever, um, whatever fancy gift they'd want to buy. Uh, players who play regularly learn you need to have funds and really you need an emergency set of funds for if things go wrong. So businesses, it's the same thing. Businesses, business capital, is not the same as just plain old spending money. Businesses must have money in reserve should things go wrong. They also need money to just fund the daily operations. So if a business has $1,000 in sales, they know quite instantly that it doesn't mean they just get to go spend $1,000 that day. Money has to cover various expenses and also is needed for should there be a downturn in business. So those are four skills from poker. Uh, once again, there are arguments from those who oppose really any form of gambling, and I think they're a bit short-sighted, which is why I'm making this video. Um, the leisure benefits by playing blackjack, horse racing, and poker are big, right? It's, it's fun. It's entertaining. Uh, but more than that, companies, universities, stock market traders, and many others could rely on the wisdom from poker to help make themselves better in a position, or to train workers and students. The benefits from poker go far beyond simple recreation. Now, making this video, I, I've been an avid poker player for many years. That's, I think the skills learned from poker isn't the best reason to kind of keep the government from prohibiting gambling or poker. Even if there were simply zero benefits from gambling, I would argue the government shouldn't restrict it as it's consenting adults choosing to live their lives. But it's really nice to know that there are several skills from poker that are applicable to life. Once again, my name's Matt Rosu. I make videos on lessons from economics and pop culture. If you enjoy this type of content, please uh, 
subscribe to the channel. If you like this video, please like, and I'd also appreciate any comments you might have. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.